Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales from Outer Space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Rules of War, written by PM451. The image flickered to new recording, another prisoner being interrogated. Female this time. She was silent, glowering at the interrogation officer. She'd never spoken, although once she had ejected saliva into the guard's face. Some animals on their world sprayed venom giving the animal more range than might, so it had taken them a while to believe that her saliva wasn't toxic. Not just not toxic to them, but not at all. The whole act seemed to be no more than defiance for the sake of itself. The screen changed through other examples of humans being interrogated, some angry, some begging, some seemingly cooperative, before changing to a recording back to the first one, keeping one of the most cooperative. He seemed nervous. Not unreasonably, a human would have insisted. While walking home from his crappy part-time job in a crappy little town, he'd been captured by a group of alien warriors, taken aboard a cloaked shuttle, and transported to what he was told was a scout ship for an alien invasion fleet. How else to top 2022, he thought at the time. There had been three other humans on the shuttle with him. On the main ship, he'd seen others in the distance being marched into the individual cells. Some looked foreign, gathered from other countries, other continents. A lot, from what he saw, maybe fifty to a hundred people in that batch. Now he was sitting in a weirdly shaped and uncomfortable seat across a disturbingly normal-looking white plastic table from a large insectoid creature asking him questions about his world. The latest of many sessions that were part language sessions, part interrogation. The aliens shared information about their own race and culture along with their intentions against them, as part of trying to teach him and to understand humans. In spite of his improved use of the alien language, in halting words, the man asked why they were revealing so much to him. The interrogator replied, as he had to many of the others, that the prisoners would all be killed after they served their purpose, so there was no danger of useful intelligence returning to Earth. A little later, when discussing the way the aliens, and by contrast humans, fought wars, the man had raised the subject of rules of war. The man asked, apparently, as an example, So, if a prisoner escaped, take uh, me, for example. If I escaped, would you hurt the other humans on the ship? Like the interrogator, those watching the recording leaned forward at this point. You can't escape, you're a prisoner. Right, uh, but humor me. If I did... And maybe killed some guards. Would you hurt the other prisoners? They're going to be killed. No. No, I mean, in addition to that. In addition to being killed. Yeah. You know. Torture, mock execution, sexual assault, starvation, anything intended to cause extreme pain or feck with their minds. Horror. Confusion. What would be the value of those things? Revenge. Indirect punishments. Lots of reasons. But that's a no, is it? The commander turned off the footage. He'd already seen what came next. And the others are still detained. He had also already asked that question. Yes, Commander. Only that one escaped. And he's dead? Yes, sir. He died trying to short the high-voltage electrical system. Did he realize what it was? We taught them to read our basic technical script as part of teaching them enough single speech to interrogate. He deliberately grabbed the high-voltage power cables connected to the detention force field system. Yes, Commander. If the backup hadn't come in, it might have actually taken down the whole system. It certainly wasn't designed with that in mind. Freeing them all, only, into the detention wing. And where are the other humans aware of this? There was no sign of prior communication. But many of them noticed the fields on their cells flickering and started trying to attack them. Using anything including their bodies. Does their nervous system not receive painful shocks from the field? Yes, sir. They seem to experience even more pain than we do. Yet, they did it anyway. We had to sedate them before they harmed themselves. And none of them are soldiers. None. We are sure every indication is that they are average members of their species. <sighs> How did he kill his interrogator? I couldn't see the uh, details. A crude blade made from a piece of material broken from the food tray, shoved repeatedly through the gaps in his carapace especially around the head and eyes. He brought another image up onto the screen. Show it to the others. 
clean it, then show it to the other humans. Ask if they recognize it. Obviously, don't let them touch it. Most claimed not to know anything about it. A few said that it was a shiv, an improvised prison weapon. We asked them if they had experience with them, and they said no. We asked how they knew about them, and they seemed uncertain. They said, everyone knows. Now they not soldiers, no commander, nor criminals, we don't believe so. He suddenly had a very bad feeling. Wait, if all the others saying that they all know, search their cells immediately. That ones that recognize all of them, pay extra attention to the ones that said that they didn't recognize it. All of them, all but four. Something itched in the inside of his carapace. And all different. There were common themes, stolen parts, broken parts from their cells. Not all had been fashioned into weapons. I'm not sure they all could, and some just seemed to be stockpiling, but, uh, yes. Oh, but for... The itching continued. Yes, Commander. The gods go back and research those four again. Use instruments. How many? Two of the four. They found a way to get behind the panels. One had multiple weapons, more than he could use alone. And the other two had nothing. No, Commander. We're certain. He pondered something, digging into his mind. No. Move them both to another cell. Actually, move all four of them. The other two might have more than one hiding spot. Commander, I assure you we search. Just do it. The lights flickered at his side. All of them, Fleet Admiral, but we've recovered more than half. Commander, is your ship compromised? No, sir. They are limited in what they can do. Kill them immediately upon capture. This is ridiculous. Yes, Reed Admiral. In the Scotship. Two escape pods. Evacuate the ships. Claxon sounded. In the flagship. Honor the Grand Fleet to fire upon the ship as soon as the pods are clear, before starting rescue. And you lost the second ship. The angler being Aster. As he watched the reports. Three, all up, she said brightly. Surely, after the second... They evacuated the second ship in individual spacesuits, not pods, in open space. Each was verified before being brought on board of the third ship. So, how? Apparently they cut the heads off several low-ranked crew members, jammed themselves somehow into the rest of the suit, and, um, operated the head like a puppet. Meaning? They stuffed their hands inside the neck and operated the mouth, while they themselves talked in near-fluent single speech to answer the challenge. The third ship... No evacuation was attempted. When it moved towards the flagship, it was fired upon and destroyed. Every escape pod was hunted down and destroyed. Every body that floated free of the wreckage was destroyed. By the stage, the original fleet admiral had gone quite mad. He ordered the entire fleet of conquest to ram into the human planet at relativistic velocity. His second in command executed him, retreated the fleet to a nearby star system, and contacted their superiors for instruction. He went back, of course. Even though they hadn't even left their planet, had no ability to leave their planet, and had no idea you existed. Correct. Well, they had rumors. Our ships weren't as perfectly cloaked as we thought, but, uh, correct. Why contact them at all? Leave them in their own system. They were advancing rapidly, and they were going to get out eventually. Maybe your admiral wasn't so mad. Just kill them all. She laughed. How could we ever be sure? So you pretended to be peace-loving, harmless, and asked for immediate peace and trade treaty. And they agreed? Yeah, oh yes. They were quite enthusiastic. Many of them are obsessive xenophiles. Then they can all be that bad. They say that one of their ancient generals cut the right hand off every male that have captured tribe, just as a warning to others. But they are a space-faring civilization now, surely. They still have issues on their home world with suicide bombers and mass shootings. Murder suicides are a common risk and familial disruptions. Their leaders require protection from their own people, even when popular. She thought for a moment, especially when popular. And all of the races that have joined your alliance, this is why none of you fight. Oh, we still fight with each other, if we are sure that humans aren't watching the area. Even fighting each other, you're still worried about them merely finding out. Oh god, yes. What if they want to help? If we do this, how would your young find honor without battle? Actually, the humans have thought of that. They have uh, spots. Uh, here, javelin. With a click, I brought up an example on the screen. Those are spears. Archery, click. Hunting bows, hunting. Ha, <laughs> no, they compete for the greatest strength. Click. Only separately. 
Here is a battle over a ball, and here, and here, and here. Click, click, click. Oh, why do you not attack more violently if they're aggressive as you claim? These games have rules that ritualize their attacks. So they don't fight, but instead, oh, these are the direct fighting contests. Fencing, click. Judo, click. Kendo, click. Taekwondo, click. The list went on for some time. Boxing, click. Enough, enough, you've made your point. And uh, mixed martial arts, click. She let that one play for a while. Gods, are these men great rivals? No, I think they own a chain of sporting good flaws together. They have more blatant battle simulations. Here's paintballing, click. Battle reenactments, click. Dodgeball, click. Oh, and racing. Horses, cars, bikes, motorbikes, aircraft, space cross, demolition derbies, click, 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 click. And they quickly adopted trials of combat of their own warriors. Click. Although, of course, we don't call it that anymore. We had to invent some rules to limit it before we could let the humans near it. Everyone seems to be having fun, at least. She sighed. Yeah. They watched in silence for some time. You believe we should sue for peace? I don't know if that's enough. You shouldn't have even hinted at war. You might have ruined everything. Unless... Maybe you can say that declaring war is how you begin a trade negotiation. They love haggling. We don't negotiate trade prices. You charge what it is worth. You accept or decline. Anything else is accusing the other of lying. I think from now on your species are going to be legendary for haggling culture. No. Sorry. He grimaced in a racist style and she showed him her understanding by letting him think in silence. Afterwards, he started, yes... Can we at least fight your civilization? Oh, oh, we'd like that. End of story. Just a quick shout out to the T5 peeps. Bob the Dragon, Cat Crab Lobster, Data Magnet, Duck Machine, Bezik, Try Again 95, Feudic Yol, Astraea the Dreamer, Caspar Arnholtz, Cam Maxwell, Athelia, Meridian 117, and Jordan Buxmorm. Thank you very much. Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer space. space. And as always, I hope that you enjoy.